Welcome back. Let us resume our discussion on the ICMR and look into the solutions um, which can be taken to uh, get a full uh, rail to rail ICMR. One of the ways of course, that may seem obvious is that if we have the option of choosing a 0 bit transistor for the NMOS, we can increase ICMR. If I have the option of very low bit transistors, I can uh, select those specific devices to reduce the uh, V C M min. And in some technologies, even for 180 nanometer TSMC or UMC models, you may have transistors which are having lower V T. And I can choose those transistors in some cases to have uh, to increase the signal swing. Not all models, uh, not, not all foundries provide those models. In some cases, where you have those models available, if you have access to those uh, particular device models, you can use them in improving some of the device performance. So, in this case, we can probably go for a 0 V transistor for the NMOS for improving the uh, ICMR on the lower side. So, in that case of course, uh, as we see the uh, for the ICMR mean uh, the V T 1 will be reduced few tens of millivolts and as a result you will have V C M mean going towards lower value. If we do that uh, we also if you, if you look at this equation here the V C M max also depends upon uh, V D D minus the V S G of the PMOS. And we say that this is the uh, gate voltage V D minus V S G. This is going to be the gate voltage of the PMOS. This plus V T one is the maximum input voltage that you can have. This is the maximum input common mode. Now, if V T one is zero, then of course um, I have the maximum uh, input common mode given by V D minus this quantity. You don't have any longer the V overdrive come coming, but you have V D minus this entire V S G term coming. And therefore, once again, if I really want to take the advantage of 0 V T in MOS, I would like to get rid of this V T also. So, uh, we can go for V T n uh, tending to 0 or low V T n MOS, also V T mod V T p uh, tending to 0. If you have low V T p MOS option, then only you will be get you will be getting the same advantage on the upper side. If you take the uh, nominal VT PMOS in the upper side you will be having limitation on the ICMR. So, make sure that if you are choosing a uh, low VT NMOS you should also choose a low VT PMOS. Uh, that is one way and of course, in case you do not have that option available we can go for some other uh, techniques to improve the overall ICMR. We can go for architecture level choices, we can combine say uh, two different kinds of comparators to arrive at a uh, overall scheme where you have a uh, full range ICMR. So, let us uh, have a look into that and let us try to address the issues related to that scheme. So, here I can uh, if, if I take note of the fact that an NMOS comparator is going to have an uh, ICMR which is limited on the lower side, because for the NMOS I have the uh, VCM min getting limited by the V t of the uh, NMOS transistor. On the upper side, however, we can go all the way very close to VDD if I am choosing nominal VT transistor. So, for the PMOS input device, the condition is just reverse. So, uh, for the PMOS input device, the input can go all the way to ground, the ICMR can go all the way to ground, but uh, on the upper side, it is limited, uh, you cannot go very close to VDD. So, the input common mode range is limited on the uh, uh, upper side in that case and on the lower. So, if we have a scheme where we are just combining the uh, comparator with uh, PMOS input device and a comparator with NMOS input device and then trying to uh, combine their output in a correct fashion using a multiplexer. We can have an analog multiplexer which is having a select line over here, this is the analog multiplexer. So, we have to choose uh, between the inputs of the CP and CN. So, we have the same uh, V in sampled V in going to both of them and you have the same V ref also uh, going to both of them. So, this is your uh, ramping V ref which is coming from the ramping circuitry and this is the sampled V in. So, this is common to both. All I need to do is choose one of them depending upon the input magnitude. Remember if the input magnitude is uh, larger the n c n will perform properly. However, if it is going lower it will fail however, the C p will uh, perform properly. So, I can basically compare this V in using another comparator with the mid value of the uh, I c mid supply value which is V d d by 2. And if the 
input signal is higher than V d by 2, we know that the C n can work well. So, uh, this can become our select signal, let us ignore this and I can put the uh, option 1 over here and 0 over here. 1 over here means when the select signal over here, if I call it select signal, if the select signal is high, the 1 input will be selected, that means the C n will be selected. So, if the input signal is uh, uh, sorry, the input signal is higher than V d by 2, then I would like to um, uh, select the, uh, I would like to select the um, C n. So, I just put a bubble over here, that means is any inversion. So, that means uh, just to follow the sign, if the input signal is higher than V d by 2, that means this will be going uh, low, because I have put a bubble over here and that would mean that uh, uh, this will be 1 when the input is going higher than V d by 2 and that will be selecting the C n and likewise in the other direction will be selecting C p and uh, such an analog mux can be implemented using a simple transmission gauge that we have discussed in the last class. So, you can have uh, the T g where you have the V uh, uh, the two inputs of the T g's coming from the C n 1, the C n and the C p and the outputs being combined over here and here you can have of course, have the uh, select lines, you can have the uh, select and select bar over here. So, when the select is uh, high, I can select the uh, C n and vice versa, I can have the select bar over here and this is my output. So, this is an analog mux and we have discussed that the on resistance of the switches can be relatively very low um, and as a result uh, whenever one of these muxes are on the corresponding uh, output C p or C n will be connected to the output. It is expected that C p and C n are digital values because they are comparator outputs and therefore, um, uh, these are going to be full swing signals close to either V d d or ground and we know that the T g will be able to pass both of these. So, this is you know one scheme where we can apply a uh, T g based mux to select one of these comparators based on the input signal level. Now, one of the question is that uh, we pointed out that the C p works for input signal levels, uh, which is uh, say uh, higher than V d by 2 going all the way to uh, sorry uh, is going to work for all the signal levels from uh, uh, going all the way to ground and C n works for all the signal levels uh, going all the way to V d d, but it does not work for the signal level going all the way to ground. Uh, so, what to choose over here is the choice of this comparator uh, important, the choice of input device whether you want to use n or p is, is it important for this one. Here of course, we saw that it is critical, um, we are uh, uh, choosing these two for different ranges of input operation. However, here we are assuming that this is working for the entire range. So, is this is this an issue? So, this was in fact one of the questions uh, this was raised uh, in our discussion offline discussions and uh, the reason why we are not concerned about the type of input device over here is that the reference voltage is fixed, it is just V d by 2 and therefore, the comparison operation over here or high gain uh, operation of this amplifier will be uh, of concern only in the vicinity of V d by 2. If the input is much higher than V d by 2, definitely the output will be deterministic, if it is much lower than uh, V d by 2 also again it will be deterministic. So, the critical point for this comparator is only when the input signal is close to V d by 2 and for that whether it is N MOS or P MOS input device does not matter, both of them are going to work well if the input device uh, 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 if the reference signal is V d by 2. Whereas, for the other two what is happening reference is being swept and uh, the critical point of concern is when the input signal is close to the reference. Therefore, for the entire range of reference 0 to V d and hence corresponding to that in entire range of the input signal should be able to work. So, for that the operation uh, is uh, the high gain operation is uh, happening in the common mode uh, fashion, because they are the input signal and the V ref are very close at the flip point, where the competitor is changing the result changing the output and hence for these two we have to be concerned about the input common mode range. However, for this we do not have to be uh, and therefore, the choice of input device is not critical. Another thing is uh, what about the gain specification. So, for these competitors anyway we have the specification of the gain uh, for here once again is gain critical, uh, the answer would be no, because um, if the gain is poor, then the resolution of this comparator will be poor. Uh, that would mean that uh, uh, for the V in uh, close to V d d by 2, say V d d by 2 
uh, plus uh, say delta for a sufficiently large delta the result is not well defined it can be either high or low and this delta can be you know few tens of millivolt it can be also 100 millivolt in this case we try to keep this delta small whether governed by the resolution requirement uh, there we try to set the delta within 15 millivolt which is coming ultimately from our requirement of the quantization and the accuracy of the ad uh, the precision of the adc and so on but here uh, that delta is not a concern why because uh, even if uh, the gain is poor and as a result the uh, decision in a uh, relatively wider range is non deterministic uh, even there is a 100 millivolt you know uh, 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 range where the gain or the response is undeterministic. There, uh, the uh, choice of C and CP in the vicinity of VDD by 2 will not be so critical because if your uh, V in is you know VDD by 2 plus 100 millivolt or VDD by 2 minus 100 millivolt, still these competitors both of these competitors can work. So, in that range, it is not very critical to choose one of them only when the input signal is far away from VDD by 2 going towards ground or to going towards VDD which is basically 0 plus V t and on the upper side uh, VDD minus mod V t. So, uh, those are the uh, uh, if the input signal is beyond these two range this upper limit of VDD minus mod V t and the other side uh, mod V t n on the lower side. So, if the uh, input signal is going above and below this range then only the selection of these two becomes critical we have to make the right selection. However, within plus minus 100 millivolt if one of them is getting selected and another one is not selected that does not matter because both of them are going to operate well. So, therefore, the gain requirement for this comparator is not so critical I can have a poor gain rate that we just maybe um, 10 or 20 gain that is also going to be good enough um, for this particular comparator. So, if you have a 20 gain uh, difference of 100 millivolt will be amplified to uh, uh, full uh, VDD swing. Therefore, uh, this is going relatively going to be a cheap comparator we do not need to worry about the uh, gain uh, high gain requirement for this one. Of course, bandwidth should be fast enough it should be able to respond fast. So, that the competitors are getting selected at the right time. So, speed should be enough gain requirement is relatively poor still to be safe if it is not hurting our power requirement we can still go for um, a gain uh, which is at least say around 100 unless it is significantly hurting our power budget. And uh, if we see, uh, if you look at some uh, results coming from simulations, the power budget for these transistors, these uh, competitors will be within few micro amperes, uh, close to 10 micro ampere within that. And uh, if we are having significantly lower gain requirement for this one, the power once again can be lower and bias current can be uh, sacrificed. It can be a fraction of micro ampere and still it can meet the required uh, nominal gain. You just make sure that the gain is sufficient in the worst case it does not drop. Uh, below the required value. So, this is going to be a relatively cheaper device as compared to the other two. So, this is uh, another way in which we can achieve full ICMR um, uh, without um, sacrificing the overall performance without having stringent dependency on the input device sizing of the, the computer that we just discussed. Um, another very important issue that we would like to mention is the choice of single stage versus two stage and interfacing of comparator and the digital component which are going to follow the comparator. So, these two issues are related and uh, going to play a very important role in uh, designs where we are having final interface between an analog comparator and the subsequent digital unit. So, let us uh, look into this. So, we have seen that your uh, ultimate target is around 400 gain from, uh, from the overall comparator and also a bandwidth requirement is around. Uh, if I look at it 1 megahertz. Uh, in your earlier examples uh, while working on uh, front end amplifier we have obtained this amount of gain from a single stage itself, but of course in that case the bandwidth for the single stage will also get limited. If you try to obtain this entire gain from a single stage the bandwidth also gets limited, um, uh, but despite that if you are suppose you are trying to you know, get uh, this gain from a single stage uh, unit and trying to uh, just apply the first differential stage for the uh, comparator operation and trying to interface the comparator with an uh, the next stage which can be just a digital inverter for example, the simplest digital circuitry. So, if I do away with the second stage what are the pros and cons. 
this is uh, uh, quite an important issue to be addressed and understood. So, here if I look at um, the interface between this differential amplifier and the inverter, assuming that this is able to achieve a sufficient gain and as a result the swing over here is sufficiently large, uh, we are expecting that this inverter will be able to convert the swing into full digital swing, because this is able to achieve a overall 400 gain and therefore, uh, 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 a small difference in voltage of course, here may be just uh, uh, 2 3 millivolts of difference between these two signals is going to give me our close to a full swing at this point. So, in that case uh, I may not even require the uh, second stage and may be able to get the entire gain from this stage. Um, there we have two cases, um, if you are depending upon this G m R O product of this first stage in order to obtain the overall swing, there uh, either you can have a larger G m or you can have relatively large R O uh, to obtain that while meeting the bandwidth constraint. So, case 1 if you have uh, large G m, so if you have large G m that means the current G m the difference in the overall current that you get assuming small signal operation delta i d that is say i d 1 minus i d 2 overall that is going to be proportional to G m times delta v in. And therefore, uh, for a given delta v in if the G m is large uh, you will be able to switch the current completely into one of the devices uh, for a relatively small uh, v in. And if your G m is sufficiently large so that for the required delta v that we have estimated is at 15 millivolt the signal is completely able to switch or the current is completely able to switch in one direction. That was definitely turn off one of the devices and as a result we can expect full swing at this point. For example, if this device is getting turned off because a large GM I in getting diverted completely and this is getting turned off, what will happen? This is anyway going to be VDD because there is no path for the current to flow, this will be VDD. Otherwise, in the other case if this is turning off, uh, uh, in that case once again uh, there is no current path in this one and therefore, this is going to be close to VDD, this is turned off and as a result this, there is no current uh, from the PMOS at this point, whereas this is completely on. Therefore, this will be discharged to ground. So, in either of the two cases if GM is sufficiently large, this node will be go going to completely VDD or ground for uh, the uh, given delta V in and uh, therefore, we may not even need the second stage and we can uh, just put another inverter um, and uh, go to the digital domain. However, if the G m is not sufficiently large, uh, the current will not be switching completely, although you may be having a uh, expected uh, you would be having a expectedly large gain and the uh, expecting a large signal swing over here, but if the current is not switching completely uh, ultimately for uh, increasing swing. Uh, since the current is not completely switched and one both none of these devices are completely off, uh, one of the devices will be entering the triode region. For example, if the voltage over here is larger, here it is smaller and uh, ultimately this voltage is dropping down, this is increasing. This transistor is going to remain in saturation no problem, but if this is dropping while this transistor is remaining on, this will ultimately enter into triode region and further uh, gain will be dropped. And once this transistor enters into triode region, the gain of the overall amplifier circuit drops and it will no longer uh, uh, go down further and it will saturate to a, a value which is higher than ground. It can be almost close to VDD by 2 also if the transistor is not, if the sizing is not proper. So, it can hang midway but rather than going all the way to ground, it can be close to VDD by 2 because the gain has dropped while this node is going to try going to go down. Therefore, uh, on the upper side also similarly, if um, the signal over here is larger uh, and here it is smaller. Once again, if uh, this transistor is trying to go, if this voltage is trying to go up while the current is not switched completely, uh, this transistor may finally enter into triode region because of the signal going up and as a result once again gain will drop and once again the voltage may not be able to reach VDD. So, therefore, the swing can get limited because the current is not getting switched completely um, and the gain is dropping before the signal reaches full swing and hence it can be risky, means you are not having full swing over here and then you are connecting an inverter, a digital inverter over here uh, to this analog signal. So, if we have say a signal which is hanging midway means say close to VDD by 2 in that vicinity and we are applying a digital inverter directly over here, what can be the condition? None of the NMOS or PMOS will be completely off, both of them uh, will be remaining on, especially if it is close to say VDD by 2. In under this condition both NMOS and PMOS are having sufficient VSG, we are having sufficient overdrive voltages as a result you can have a huge amount of static current flowing through this inverter for that duration. 
So, as a result you will end up uh, uh, burning a good amount of static current for that small period. For the comparator we have you know, control on the current by using this bias current we can control the total static current over here. CMOS inverter we do not have current control. So, it just depends on the W by L and the V G S. If the V G S is sufficiently strong as compared to V T, you have sufficient V overdrive, it will burn a good amount of static current and within a small period it can give you a huge amount of current dissipation and it can disturb your power balance that you are trying to create. Uh, so, that, that is one issue. Another uh, uh, and, and it can have cascading effect. So, you can have the next stage also if this is uh, you know not having full swing is somewhere close, close to VDD by 2, the output of this inverter will also be not having full swing and subsequent stage can also burn more power. In general, the characteristic of the inverter is of course, uh, if, if you are having the transition region gain on the inverter very sufficiently large uh, and your signal is close to say mid, uh, midway in this transition region, even if it is not exactly VDD by 2 and the slope is large, you can ensure that. Uh, if my input is say slightly higher than VDD by 2, the output will be uh, relatively uh, uh, sufficiently lower than VDD by 2 if the gain is large. So, the slope is large and my uh, input is little bit at least lower than VDD by 2, uh, this larger slope will in, uh, ensure that the output is sufficiently lower. So, definitely that will help in um, pushing the output of this inverter further away from VDD by 2. So, that is the uh, uh, property of an inverter regenerative property, where uh, if you having input which is at least little bit offset from the trip point of the inverter, not necessarily VD by 2, the trip point of the inverter, we can uh, uh, make sure that the output of the inverter is uh, sufficiently further away from the trip point. Um, so, uh, uh, but in that case also we can end up burning a good amount of static current. So, that is not a good practice. So, Although you may be able to meet your gain requirement from the first stage, it would be good to involve or introduce a second stage, so that it is ensuring almost full swing uh, and it is ensuring that either the output is going all the way close to VDD or ground, so that the interface between the comparator and the uh, digital inverter is robust enough, it is not leading to uh, static power dissipation in the inverter. Uh, another critical issue will be the trip point of the inverter that I just mentioned trip point is not necessarily V d by 2, it is not necessary that this midpoint that we are looking at in this transfer characteristic is going to be V d by 2. And uh, that is another important issue which uh, uh, plays an important role whenever we are interfacing an analog unit like a comparator output with a digital inverter. So, let us look into the concept of trip point uh, in little bit more detail after a short break. Before we go there, we can uh, see if there is any question. Any, any question, any part uh, needs a discussion over here? <coughs> yes, ok. So, let us resume our discussion, any, any question regarding the discussion we had so far regarding the mass based collection. All right. So, let us look into the concept of trip point of the inverter, uh, which is again going to play an important role uh, for the analog uh, circuits wherever you are trying to incorporate digital inverters interfaced with analog signals. So, uh, trip point is defined as the threshold of the inverter, and this is the input level for which output is equal to input. So, if I if I if there are if I draw the transfer characteristics of an inverter and look at the V out equal to V in curve which is 45 degree, the point where it intersects is going to be a trip point, the point at which V in is equal to V out. This is V out and this is the V in. So, if you are going for V in higher than this trip point, we are expecting that again uh, you are having the output going down and on the upper side once again output going uh, close to the V d. And uh, the trip point can be seen as a threshold of the inverter, the point at which it is uh, going to uh, 
at the input value at which it is going to switch from high to low. For example, if you have trip point which is higher, we expect that this curve will be moving uh, further over here and therefore, this is the value of v in for which it will be uh, switching down. Likewise, if the trip point of the inverter is lower, uh, we will expect that this is the value, this is the uh, value of v in, uh, this is the value of v in uh, 2 for which the inverter is going to switch down. So, we can see that the definition of trip point is going to tell us what is the minimum value of v in for which the high to low transition in the inverter will take or corresponding that uh, the uh, low to high transition of the inverter will take depending upon the input signal. So, this trip point of course, tells me that uh, the, uh, what is the effective threshold of the inverter. Just like the MOSFET has a threshold, we can say that the inverter has a switching threshold and it uh, depends upon uh, the intersection of this v in equal to v out curve and the inverter characteristics over here. In order to uh, obtain this trip point and see what are the parameters on which it will depend, we can write down the equation for the current in the inverter when the trip point is occurring. So, when uh, the trip point occurs, we are assuming that both its input and output voltages are close and they are uh, somewhere midway, they are not close to extremes. So, if I take that assumption for the time being, uh, then I can say that this is you know close to say V d d by 2 and uh, I have V in and V out approximately equal to V in, this is V d d and this is ground 0. In that condition, what is the region of operation for the PMOS and NMOS? If I assume that say uh, uh, this is close to V d d by 2, suppose I am taking the middle curve and I assume that this is close to V d d by 2. So, both of them V in equal to V out are going to be close to V d d by 2. As a result, we can definitely see that uh, for the NMOS, the gate voltage, drain voltage similar as a result of course, this is going to be in saturation. Likewise, for the PMOS the same thing gate voltage, drain voltage similar therefore, is in saturation. Therefore, at that trip point both the transistors we can assume they are in saturation and I can write down the current equation for both of them I d n equal to I d p for the trip point and uh, for I d n if I write this as say root k, uh, let me uh, write down the equation as k n v g s minus v t square. So, this is v in minus v t n square and uh, this is equal to the um, MOS current P MOS current which is equal to uh, v s g minus mod v t square. So, the v s g is v d d minus s which is uh, uh, minus g which is your v in once again minus mod v t p. So, uh, I can equate these two, I can uh, take the root k n v in minus v t n is equal to, I am ignoring the channel length modulation for simplicity. Uh, of course, that will also come into picture and influence these voltages. And from here, I can uh, find out the v in. If I uh, take the k n upon k p over here, I have the k n upon a p and you have uh, sorry this plus 1 coming over here and this is going to be V d d plus uh, uh, mod uh, plus uh, V t n times k n upon k p minus uh, mod V t p and as a result I can write down the particular trip point value as V d d plus V t n uh, k n upon k p minus mod V t p upon root under again k n upon k p plus 1. So, we can see the dependencies over here uh, how they are coming up. Uh, so, k n k p is equal to uh, the trans conductance parameter of the MOSFET which is equal to mu n c u x w by l. So, if I assume mu and c x are constant, so these two quantities are ultimately depending upon the w by l ratios. And uh, if I look at older technologies, even in 1 eight nanometer k n upon k p ratio, uh, if I talk about the mu n upon mu p ratio that is around 2. So, the NMOS is faster or the mobility of the NMOS is slightly um, higher as compared to PMOS by a factor of 2 to 2.5. And as a result, uh, uh, if 
if I assume the W by L's are similar, this will have uh, that particular factor of uh, nu n upon mu p coming in. Now, if I look at the design parameters, that is the W by L available to us, uh, there we can see that if I am uh, increasing the uh, k n upon k p term, and if I assume that uh, these terms are getting uh, you know cancelled out almost similar, and therefore the magnitude over here is you know relatively lower. If I just increase the k n upon k p term, this denominator term is going to increase, and as a result, uh, if I see the uh, the trip point is going to shift towards lower value. So, in that case, I am having the uh, overall trip point shifting towards the uh, lower value, and hence the threshold of the inverter or the trip point of the inverter is shifting towards lower value. Likewise, if I am having k n upon k p lower, that is, I am increasing the w by l of p and reducing the w by l of n, the trip point will be shifting towards uh, relatively higher values. Um, what is the uh, consequence of that? It means that the overall uh, trip point is going to be determined by the w by l ratios and also the v t and uh, v t n values, v t n and uh, v t p values, which are not uh, very much in designer's control. They can vary uh, from device to device significantly. So, even if uh, the k n and k p are set almost equal, the v t n v t p uh, values may not be exactly same. And likewise, you are having in the denominator, especially you have the k n upon k p ratio, which can vary from unity. So, once again, you are having uh, the other parameters also, like the lambdas, which we have ignored, coming into picture and determining the overall trip point. So that uh, that we have ignored for simplicity, but ultimately lambdas are also going to play a role. Therefore, the trip point is dependent upon the sizing of these devices and uh, also the uh, terms like threshold voltages and the lambda. And therefore, they are uh, very much process dependent and can vary from inverter to inverter. Even if you have inverters uh, with the same dimension, uh, they can have significantly different trip points. It can vary by several um, tens of volts, it can vary by hundreds of millivolts. And typically, in the CMOS process, you can have um, uh, the threshold voltages of NMOS getting higher uniformly. Uh, th uh, that in that case, all the PMOS transistors on the die will be having slightly higher voltage than the nominal case. You can also have a condition where the NMOS threshold voltages are going high. So, in that case, once again, all the NMOS transistors on the die will be having slightly lower threshold or higher or threshold voltage than the nominal value. So, both these scenarios can happen. NMOS or PMOS can have uniformly relatively higher or uh, lower uh, threshold voltages. So, we call them process corners. So, basically, we have uh, four possible process corners. You have the case where uh, you can have the NMOS, you can have uh, so, if, if, if I denote one of the axes for the PMOS and another one for NMOS, you can have a case where both NMOS and PMOS are slow. That means, both the threshold voltages of NMOS and PMOS for all the devices are uh, higher than nominal. That means, the on current will be large, smaller and hence the speed will be uh, smaller. You can have the condition where both the NMOS and PMOS threshold voltages are lower than the uh, nominal. In that case, both the devices will be faster than expected because the threshold voltage will be smaller, on current will be faster. So, you have a fast, fast corner. Likewise, you can have the other two corners where you have slow fast, one of them having relatively smaller volt threshold voltage than the higher other one, and you have the fast slow corner. So, you can have in general these four corners, and that would mean that dominantly on an average, if you take an NMOS, if the device is in slow fast corner or the die that you are having is a slow fast corner, that means the uh, NMOS uh, will be relatively slower as expected, or the threshold voltage of the NMOS is higher than expected, um, and vice versa. So, in general, uh, we can have uh, uh, these four corners, and as a result, the threshold voltage of the MOSFET or the inverter that you are expecting can uh, significantly vary from what you ex uh, have designed it for in the simulation. And hence, uh, when we are uh, targeting interfacing of an analog signal with the digital inverter, we can not be sure that the threshold voltage or the trip point of this inverter will be VDD by 2, it can vary significantly. And in that case, the assumption that okay, a given swing, say, from 1.6 volt to, say, uh, 0.9 volt, it will be reliably amplified by this inverter and converted into a digital level, because the uh, trip point has been set to be you know midway between these two, that is not going to work. So, in a simulation, you may be getting some values like this, a minimum value over here 0.9 and maximum 0.6. And uh, by sizing the W by L of these two, for example, as I said, if you um, increase the W by L of the PMOS, the trip point will uh, shift 
further there will be further higher over here the, the characteristics will be shifted further as we just saw. So, if you do that then we cannot expect that whatever trip point we have designed it for say midway between 1.6 and 1.9 after the fabrication the trip point will remain there it can go down also it can go down below 1 uh, below 0.9 also therefore, it will fail in that condition. So, this is not a very robust case when you are try to to trying to interface the analog output coming from the comparator directly with the digital inverter. So, it will be better to convert this swing this signal into full swing using another stage and then apply to the inverter. So, that will lead to a more robust robust design and it will not be dependent upon process it will not be uh, you know dependent upon the sizing of this w by l of p and n v t of this p and n. So, that even you are having changes in the process corner you are having different corners because of which the threshold voltage are changing for the n mos p mos pair and as a result the trip point of this inverter is changing uh, still you will be ensuring that the output signal is going all the way to viridian ground and hence the inverter is going to work reliably. So, uh, this justifies the use of the second stage even if uh, in case you are having a lower gain requirement and um, you are able to do it with a single stage uh, a more uh, reliable design would include a second stage. So, that you are always ensuring full swing before it goes to the uh, comparator uh, because before it interfaces with the digital inverter. So, we saw two reasons one is the static power dissipation. Uh, so, that you know, when the signal is close to VDD by 2 not fully ground or VDD it can lead to a lot of static power dissipation in the interfacing inverter. Second reason is the robustness of the circuit whether where uh, we are talking about the trip point of the inverter which can vary significantly is not necessarily VDD by 2 as we see it depends upon the device parameters and the W by L ratio of the N MOS and P MOS transistors and that can also significantly vary over process. So, it can uh, be very different from the uh, expected value and hence uh, uh, such an interfacing will not be very reliable. For this particular stage the gain will not drop unless this output voltage is reaching all the way to VDD minus V over drive. So, if the V over drive is small it can go all the way to VDD till that point also the gain will be sufficient. Likewise on the lower side also uh, the gain will not drop unless the voltage over here has gone down all the way to V over drive of n and uh, uh, that would mean that you know few tens of millivolt. So, if you are sizing this <coughs> properly the V over drive of this n MOS can be within few tens of uh, maybe just few tens of millivolt as a result uh, the gain of this stage will not drop or this or this n MOS or T MOS will not enter into triode region in the voltage is over here is going all the way to VDD minus V over drive which can be very close to VDD or this voltage is going down all the way to just V over drive of n which is once again very close to ground. So, you have few tens of millivolt maybe you know, 50 millivolt over here and 50 millivolt over here even for this entire range these two transistors are still in saturation therefore, gain is maintained they will not uh, they will not uh, this swing will not reduce the gain of this stage and then you know uh, create problem in the um, amplification. Whereas, in this case what is happening if the GM is not sufficient and the swing is increasing the transistors are entering into triode and as a result the uh, gain is dropping and is not able to uh, approach VDD or ground because before it can approach VDD or ground the gain of the circuit has dropped and it uh, stuck to that you know. Uh, intermediate value and in that is interfacing it with the digital inverter is going to be a bad idea. Whereas, in the second stage you have uh, the opportunity of having full swing because this or this transistor will not enter into triode even if this voltage approaches all the way to VDD all the way to ground. So, that is the reason why interfacing this with the differential amplifier then applying a digital inverter will be a better option a more robust option from the point of view of process variation and also power dissipation. Any any question? Any question before we proceed further and look into some other uh, design issues associated with our comparator? So uh, we should have uh, clear information regarding the trip point. Once again, if I look at the trip point, we can. Uh, if I am talking about the W by L ratio it is also important to intuitively see what is happening if I am changing the W by L of N and P. So, at this uh, at this point it sees that ok means if I am having the uh, the K and K P ratio increasing then that means that the trip point is going to uh, uh, go lower. Why it is happening that also we can see. So, if the W by L of N MOS is getting increased uh, that means for a uh, let me let me draw it on a separate plot. So, that it is more evident. So, uh, so, having this intuition is important whenever we are uh, looking at the sizing of the inverter which is interfaced with analog circuitry. So, that uh, uh, we are clear about the W by L sizing requirements. So, in many cases it comes into picture when we are looking at uh, designs having mixed signal component. 
so if i uh, say that i am going to increase the w by l of the n mos then what do we expect uh, should happen to the transfer characteristics this equation tells me that the transfer characteristics should shift towards the left because the kn upon kp uh, ratio will try to uh, bring this value down trip point down now if i uh, look at what is happening here if i am having the uh, suppose this is my original curve where the trip point was given by say v th one this is trip point of the inverter threshold voltage of the inverter and then i decided to increase the w by l of this mosfet that means for the same vt h since the vg w by l has increased i would expect larger current in the nmos that means the nmos has become stronger i have put larger w by l for the nmos that's why uh, for the same vth i would expect larger current over here uh, on the other hand they have the same w by l for the pmos therefore the vsg of the pmos is remaining same w by l of the pmos is remaining same this is remaining same but i have increased the w by l of n as compared to the original device where the trip point was obtained here so now here if i uh, see that the vsg of the mosfet is remaining uh, pmos is remaining same and the uh, w by l is remaining same and for the nmos however the scenario is different w by l has increased for the same vg therefore i would expect larger current flow over here and that would uh, mandate that uh, the pmos also has larger current because they are same device and the only way pmos can have larger current <coughs> this voltage should go down right that would mean that this voltage must be further down as compared to the previous values you can see that this curve should shift down from here to here so we say that the pull down device is becoming stronger if the pull down device is becoming stronger it will be able to pull down the uh, inverter from high to low for smaller voltages the threshold voltage become lower so the nmos is a pull down device it tries to pull down the output to ground all the way whatever capacitance over here is appearing because of the parasitic it will try to discharge it to the ground so if the nmos is becoming stronger the device over here is becoming larger that means it can pull down the device for a smaller input voltage on the other hand if the pmos is becoming stronger it will take much uh, larger voltage over here to pull down the device so the characteristics will shift towards the higher side so this is important to you know, keep in mind increasing the w by l of the nmos that means we are making the pull down device stronger that will pull down the inverter characteristics earlier for a low, lower input voltage whereas the pull up device the pmos if i am trying to make that strong it will be uh, it will take a larger input voltage to pull it down because the pull up device has become stronger so this is the direction in which uh, my kn is increasing or in other words w by l of n is increasing or you can say the ratio of these two quantity w by l of n and w by l of p so if i am making the w by l n of n stronger as compared to w by l of p then this is the shift in the characteristic that i can obtain this is very important and uh, um, whenever we are dealing with interfacing of inverters with analog circuitry this sizing constraint uh, needs to be uh, addressed in some cases we would like to intentionally uh, keep the vth on the higher side or on the lower side and remember the threshold voltage variation it reduces if the size of the mosfets are larger so we will very shortly discuss the off concept of offset so if the mosfet devices are larger the um, the sigma vt the distribution of the vt becomes sharper the so sigma of the vt drops with uh, drops with the area of the mosfet that means if i uh, collect say 100 mosfets of dimension w by l Uh, so their uh, their dimension the product is w and l1 the area is w1 l1 so they will have a certain distribution of vt that means uh, i am this is the uh, vt that i am measuring and this is the number of samples this is the number of samples so i am taking first 100 mosfets with having w1 l1 uh, dimensions their area therefore the gate area is w1 l1 if i uh, look at their vt distribution some mosfet is uh, n number of mosfets are having a vt which is over here another uh, given number of mosfets are having vt which is over here you know some mosfets are having vt which is higher than the nominal this is a nominal vt that i expect and along that you have a gaussian distribution if i take another 100 mosfets which is having the w by l say uh, four times in that case the distribution or the sigma of the distribution also becomes sharper and the distribution becomes smaller that means the spread in the vt becomes smaller why because 
uh, one of the important contributor to this sigma VT happens to be the dopant fluctuation. When the MOSFET size is smaller, in the channel you have, under the channel you have uh, some do dopant which are constituting the channel and uh, they, are, they are basically uh, determining the threshold voltage. And, uh, and uh, those uh, those dopant numbers are ultimately uh, going to vary from device to device. If you look at, say, uh, if you look at you know different devices of different dimensions, you can have you know the dopant numbers varying very significantly, especially if it is scale device. Um, and as a result, the threshold voltage, which is dependent upon the dopant, uh, uh, that can also you know vary. Is the number of dopants is fluctuating. If we have larger devices, then the percentage variation of the dopants is also smaller. If we have a device area which is, you know, larger, a much larger device, then the uh, the percentage variation in the dopant will be smaller because uh, if you are having a very small device for a particular technology, minimum size device, then the number of dopants is countable, and the percentage fluctuation that you can get over here will be larger. As you are going on large, increasing the area, the percentage fluctuation that you get in the number of dopants over here also reduces with area because uh, here the probability of you know finding uh, electrons per unit area is given and then you have a small area therefore the probability of fluctuation over here is much larger whereas uh, the probability of electron per unit area multiplied by this larger area so you're having a much larger area over which you are averaging the probabilities and as a result you are having the percentage variation in the absolute number of dopants over here relatively smaller. As a result, larger number of, or larger area of the device, larger WL, uh, leads to smaller sigma VT. This can be analytically derived also from the MOSFET threshold voltage equation. If I assume certain uh, uh, dependence of the threshold voltage on the dopant, the random dopant distribution or RDF is one of the major contributor to this threshold voltage mismatch or variation from device to device. And if I therefore, if I keep this information in mind from circuit point of view, it can be very important because if I increase the W by L of the MOSFET, the threshold voltage distribution can be relatively smaller. I can uh, I can expect that the uh, threshold voltage of the MOSFET will be close to the nominal value. It will not deviate too much. Whereas if you use minimum size transistor, the variation can be big. If you use minimum size transistor, the distribution can be much larger and the nominal VT is say 0.4 volt, the VT can go all the way to say 0.2 volt. Uh, sorry, uh, 0.6 volt, it can go all the way to say 0.2 volt, it can be bad if you are using minimum size transistor. Uh, so, I am being a little aggressive over here, but even in good technologies, you can have at least uh, 100 millivolt plus minus uh, uh, variation for a minimum device. Whereas, if you are uh, having say uh, larger devices, the distribution becomes sharper because the sigma VT reduces. So, a larger device, W by L, uh, larger W and L of the PMOS or NMOS will ensure that the VT uh, of the device is close to the nominal value and then I can have more assurance regarding the threshold voltage of this inverter or uh, the mismatch between the transistors can be uh, relatively lesser. So I can be more deterministic that okay if I am choosing a certain W by L ratio for this my uh, uh, V in or the threshold voltage or the trip point of the inverter can be more deterministically obtained from this equation because these are not varying so much this distribution or uh, the variation of these two components is not so much. So that is another important point to be uh, taken care of uh, and uh, while looking at the analog circuits, the differential amplifier, or the uh, operation amplifiers mismatch and offset uh, once again this point has to be uh, uh, considered. Let us take a break and see whether we have any question at this point before we can uh, uh, resume our discussion.